We have a legacy of contamination in the district. Organic pollution is very prevalent. We are coming out of a cycle of 60, 70 years. I could go even further back of industrialization. I mean, this is the quintessential post-industrial landscape in New Jersey. Lowlands, you know, people just dumped here. Francisco Artigas is talking about the Kearney Marsh, located in the meadowlands of northern New Jersey. Once a saltwater marsh, it was drained and used as a landfill. Later, a freshwater marsh was established on top of the dump. And while wildlife still remains here today, Kearney Marsh faces other threats than those from below. During rainy periods, sewage overflows into the swamp. Runoff from nearby landfills is also a problem. The result is a marsh laden with toxins. For Donna Fennell, this is a perfect place, for she is a soil explorer. A lot of people have heard about PCBs, that's polychlorinated biphenyls. These are compounds that were produced as industrial chemicals and used uh, for electrical insulators. They were used in carbonless copy paper. Their production was banned in the late 70s after it became apparent that these things were an environmental problem. PCBs are very hydrophobic, so they like to stick to soil particles. Those soil particles are the recipients of many types of pollutants. Some of these soil particles get washed into aquatic systems and form the basis of the sediment that forms in the bottoms of rivers, lakes, harbors, and coastal areas. Organic matter contained in soil is sort of an attractant for some of these more problematic pollutants like PCBs and dioxins. Today, Fennel and assistant Val Crummins are going against convention. The standard method for eliminating such toxins is to dredge, physically remove the polluted sediments from the aquatic environment. This is not only costly, but the muck collected then needs to find a safe home so that the toxins don't spread further. But Donna and her Rutgers colleagues believe they have a better idea. Our techniques are intended to work naturally within the sediment. We're focused on really treating the pollutants where they are. We're looking at microorganisms that occur naturally in the sediment or which we may introduce to the sediment to transform and detoxify these compounds. That way we can detoxify the sediment in place and then the excavation or dredging, if it occurs later as a normal course of management of aquatic sediments, would not uh, result in redistribution of those pollutants. The microbes that the Rutgers staff inject into the polluted sediments are tiny bacteria, ones that, in order to live, absorb chlorine from toxins like PCBs. What these microorganisms do is they use the chlorinated compound as their oxygen. They're breathing chlorine, so to speak. The Marsh experiment has several steps. First, a barrel is set down into the sediment to isolate it from the rest of the bottom. The dechlorinating microbes are then injected into the sediment. Then a second blue barrel is fitted into the first. This allows the scientists to funnel in materials from the boat. The last step is to cap off the embedded barrel with a gel-like clay seal. This capping idea is something that has been used for some time for treating sediment. What we want to do is study how that, the microbial process under the cap could be stimulated and how it can work in conjunction with capping. Good. Yeah. Or at least Back on shore, the Rutgers team examines the sample just brought in from the boat. CSREES helped fund this research, along with a grant from the Department of Defense. This stuff is really super. Right. With the samples safely preserved in liquid hydrogen, the serious sediment is transferred back to Rutgers, where the rigorous lab work begins. It is here that Fennel is discovering the intricacies of the dechlorinating microbes used at Kearney Marsh. Only by using molecular DNA technologies can we have a hope of detecting those microorganisms. Extracting the DNA and using molecular markers that are specific for the bacteria that we're interested in, we can pinpoint members that make up only a small percentage of that population. Right now I have a three-year-old in my house and I'm very concerned about the impact that pollutants have 
we're really starting to break down these barriers. Uh, you know, what happens in sediments? What can degrade these pollutants? We're developing technologies to deal with these legacy pollutants, and we can sort of right the wrongs that have been done in the past. It's recovering our environmental legacy and our heritage and making that a resource for future generations. In 2001, homeowners applied over 40% of garden chemicals used in the U.S. Land-grant universities study the impact of chemical runoff on soils and supply urbanites with guidelines for responsible care of city landscapes.